I'd like to um, thank Congressman um, Kucinich, who's come here along with his lovely wife, in spite of the rain. So Congressman, Congressman Kucinich has always stood up for the truth and stood up for what he believed, and we are so happy to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. When the Dalai Lama last came to Washington to receive the Congressional Gold Medal, uh, my wife and I were present with him and later on in the afternoon spent quite a bit of time with him talking about his aspirations for the people of Tibet. This is an important moment in the history of the world because the very moral power which you represent by your presence here, is a force that can transform the world. The power of compassion is a real power. And at this moment, we must have compassion for the Chinese who find themselves in a very contradictory position of wanting to demonstrate to the world that they are a great power, that they have a great economy, that they have great opportunities, and yet at the same time, they are falling short on the single most important principle that relates to humanity, and that is the basic human rights of people. And so the Tibetan people have the opportunity to demonstrate the moral force which changes the world. Forty years ago, an American leader by the name of Martin Luther King use the power of moral force to be able to change this nation, which was locked into a kind of racism from which it appeared it could not escape. But because he stood on moral authority, he was able to stand and address thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in the Washington Mall and talk about a dream that he had of real equality. Today, the dream of the people of Tibet is for freedom. It is for human rights. It is for political rights. It is for economic rights. It is for self-determination. And the world community must stand with Tibet at this moment. But we must also remember that this is an opportunity for growth for China. China wants to demonstrate its ability to hold an Olympics. Well, let us have an Olympics of human rights where China can win a gold medal by freeing Tibet. <laughs> and we must also let China know that these Olympics are an opportunity for it to show its greatness in a new, in a new way. It was more than 30 years ago that a president by the name of Richard Nixon did something that was unthinkable for an American president. He actually made the initiative to go to China. And he was someone who had established a lifetime of record as a hardline anti-communist. And yet Richard Nixon was able to go to China. China then benefited from that opening. China had to see there was a moment for an opening in awareness. China must see that this represents a new opportunity for China as well. That's why the power of the Dalai Lama, who is one of the great leaders of our time, can be brought to bear with compassion and open-heartedness. And even as we insist on the basic human rights of the Tibetan people, so we must also accord the people of China an opportunity to support the Tibetan people. Because we know that China is not a monolith. The people of the United States are not a monolith. The Tibetan people, of course, are not a monolith, but we stand as one for human freedom. And so at this moment, at this moment, let us remember Tibet's gift to the world. Tibet is teaching the world wisdom. Tibet is teaching the world compassion. The Tibetan monks seek to teach the world nonviolent conflict resolution, the power of moral suasion, the power of the human heart, all in this moment comes to bear as we seek self-determination 
for the people of Tibet as we seek to use the Olympics as a moment when we can elevate the cause of human freedom, when we can elevate the cause of the Tibetan people, and where the people all over the world will rejoice that someday, because they believed in compassion, because they believed in human freedom, their belief will be made flesh through the freedom of the Tibetan people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.